Hello and welcome to another review here from Ricky's Productions. My name is Ricky and today we're going to be reviewing the Google Pixel C. The Pixel C is one of the most confusing tablets I've ever used. You might have heard this from other reviewers as well. And this is because the software really doesn't much help with the hardware. Although I will tell you, this is probably one of my most favorite Android tablets that I've ever used. Now let's get into the meat of this tablet and explore if this is the right one for you. The first thing I thought of when I saw this tablet was of the Surface line from Microsoft. They definitely took some design cues from their competitor, but this isn't a bad thing. This makes for a really good looking, well-built tablet. The Pixel is a metal device. What's nice about this is it's cool to the touch when you pick it up after a while, and it feels really premium in hand. This device feels like it costs more than it actually does. I have to give credit to Google for this. This is the best feeling Android tablet I have ever felt. The outside of the device is very minimal. You only have a light bar and camera on the back of the device. The light bar shows up whenever you're using the tablet, but can also be knocked on twice to show your battery level. While this isn't a necessary feature, it's definitely a cool one and no one else has it, so you can say that. On the side of the device are located your power and volume down buttons, which are really well done. Clicky, but not hard to press. You also have your stereo speakers, which I will get into more later, and your USB-C connection, so you can charge it along with the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Overall, I really like the design. The absence of a company tram stamp makes me smile. If I have to give this tablet one thing, I can say this is a really well-built device. One downfall to all this metal is this tablet is pretty heavy. Not something I couldn't handle, but something that could become a nuisance if you're holding up your tablet while playing a video game or watching a movie for a while. I must say, if you're intending on picking up this tablet without the keyboard, then you're wasting your money and you should look for another tablet. The Pixel C at the time of this review has two official covers from Google. They have the Pixel C Folio keyboard and the Pixel C keyboard. The one that is being marketed the most is the Pixel C keyboard. This is a really cool idea of how to do a keyboard. Magnets. And surprisingly, it doesn't corrupt all your data. The keyboard connects by laying your tablet on the top portion. It connects with the magnet and automatically pairs with the keyboard over Bluetooth. From there, you can adjust it from any angle from 100 degrees to 180 degrees. Multi-angle for the win. The keyboard itself is made of metal on the bottom and actually is pretty hefty. When connected to the tablet, it adds quite a bit of weight to an already heavy tablet and is almost as heavy as my laptop. One thing I don't like about this keyboard is that when it's closed up, it only protects the display. And while I appreciate that, I don't want the rest of the tablet getting scratched up either. This is where the Pixel C Folio keyboard comes into play. This keyboard is made from a really nice leather feeling material, feels pretty premium to me, and it covers the tablet from head to toe. The tablet lays in this portion made specifically for it, and from there you can decide from two angles, one that's propped up and one that's laid down. It connects the same way as the other keyboard, and it's also lighter. You can definitely feel a difference when, if you have both of them in your hands. Now onto the actual typing experience. It's fucking great. Wow, I did not expect to have such an enjoyable experience typing on this keyboard. I've always hated using third-party Bluetooth keyboards that were made to work with tablets, but this one blows most keyboards out of the water. I almost like it as much as typing on my computer. First of all, the keys feel like you're actually clicking them. They make sound and have a really nice travel with them as well. They did do something that you will have to get used to. In order to make the keys big enough to not feel so cramped, they decreased the size of the keys on the side. I feel the sacrifice was good because the keys you hit the most, like your alphabet and numbers, are as large as any full-size keyboard. I typed this whole review up plus a couple other things on this keyboard, and I didn't get tired with it. If I had to get one complaint, it would be that they should replace the search button with a caps lock button, because I have pressed it on more than one occasion thinking it was a caps lock button, and have had Google Now pop up in my face, and that pissed me off. Oh, and if you think you might get both keyboards and use them whenever you need one over the other, just keep in mind, switching between keyboards is one of the most annoying things I've ever done. It doesn't work half the time, so my suggestion would be to pick up one of them that would suit you the best. For me, that would be the Folio keyboard. The keyboard also doesn't have a talk to text option, which was, wasn't too worrisome for me, but can be annoying to some of you. And it also doesn't have any Android shortcuts like home or multitasking or anything like that. So it doesn't feel like it completely fits with the Android experience, although it is really nice to type by. The display on this thing is absolutely gorgeous. From just the wallpaper that comes stock on here, to typing a paper, to watching a Game of Thrones, you definitely won't be disappointed with looking at the screen. It also gets bright as hell with it. At an amazing 500 nit brightness, this thing worked better under light than a lot of devices I've used. It doesn't get as dark as I would like, but I can live with it if it gets this bright. Mm. The speakers on the Pixel C are stereo speakers. 
one on each side of the tablet. They're actually not too bad. I would prefer them on the front of the device and I wish they didn't distort too much at high volumes because they aren't a lot of speakers around. They definitely will get the job done though. Um, just don't expect an amazing experience. Battery life is actually pretty good on this device. It has a huge battery and usually lasts me a day and a half, maybe two days if I'm good. And this includes continuous typing, video streaming, along with some light social media stuff. This device is also compatible with the same quick charging that the Nexus devices have, and it also charges over USB-C. So make sure you buy some USB-A to USB-C cords if you're planning on getting this device. It'll just make your life a lot easier, like I mentioned in my Nexus 5 review. Now, the charging also kind of is cool for the keyboard because it connect. you just connect it, basically. You just have the camera on the front face the space bar on the keyboard, and it just automatically charges. Um, it's amazing, it's magic, and it's super easy. You just have to close your tablet, basically, and you're charging your keyboard. Basically, I've never seen it die, so it's pretty good. Performance-wise, this thing is a beast. This thing can run Grand Theft Auto San Andreas maxed out without even a hint of lag. I love it. It's so powerful, and that NVIDIA chip really does this tablet justice. When you're surfing the web, typing papers up, or playing your high-def videos, it's quick and responsive, and probably one of the most powerful tablets out the market right now. I do have to mention as well that they really did a wrong turn by not including an LTE variant when a tablet like this feels as if it should be used anywhere, anytime. Not having LTE really hinders it and I genuinely missed it. And even in the packaging inside of the keyboard case, it said that there should be an LTE option inside the keyboard. Unfortunately, that doesn't exist right now. So I'm kind of pissed off by that. I'm a premature. This tablet is running 6.0.1. Now, I'm only going to go over the few things uh, that are new in this tablet version. First of all, your navigation buttons have been separated and moved to the sides. This is the smartest thing Google has done with the tablet experience. It makes so much sense, and it should be standard everywhere. It only makes sense to you. I don't hold my tablet from the middle, I hold it from the sides. So, especially when you have it in landscape mode with the keyboard, your fingers kind of want to go to the sides, so it just really makes sense. They also brought back a feature where you can bring down the notification shade from wherever. I miss this because in Lollipop, it only comes down in the middle. Obviously, with the keyboard, this feels like it should be used in landscape. But unfortunately, not all apps can be used in landscape. Even some of Google's app, like YouTube Studio, will show up in only portrait. Even Instagram does this too. One of the biggest disappointments is that Docs isn't properly optimized for any mobile use. And that sucks because you would feel like this would be the perfect, perfect place for that. It just feels like you type in a blank canvas, but it's not in what they call print layout. So you can't really see what it's going to look like on paper. You can switch to print layout, but it's more of a print preview. You can't go to it and see what it will look like. You can't edit from that screen. You have to go back to the random screen and try to fix it fine. This tablet feels like it should be a productivity tablet because of the awesome keyboard and surface-like design. This feels like it should be competing against devices like the iPad Pro and the Surface 3. But it can't because it doesn't have anything extra. It's just another Android tablet. And you can get this experience from any other Android tablet, like last year's Nexus 9, or even an NVIDIA Shield tablet for a lot, lot less. It doesn't even have multi-window, so I can't have my YouTube app open while, I have, while I'm browsing Facebook or Twitter. And I can't have my Chrome browser open while I'm looking at specs and writing up something for my channel. This is where the tablet really becomes confusing. It's a tablet designed to be different, but it isn't. And there is where it really starts feeling like this tablet is premature. Because you know what would make this tablet killer? Multi-Windows support. If it had that, I would recommend this to anyone, even people looking at a Surface Pro. Unfortunately, this isn't coming until at least Android N, so that's another year away. I also can't recommend this to anyone who just wants to buy this as a multimedia device. Because like I mentioned, buying this without a keyboard is pointless, and it's much too heavy to hold while you're trying to game or watch a movie. I'm holding it right now while I'm saying this, and my hand's already tired. The worst part is that this tablet starts at $500 and another $150 for whatever keyboard you pick. So at $650, I'm sorry folks, but for this tablet, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. So it's getting a 6.5 out of 10, and I wouldn't recommend it this year, not until next year. Maybe next year, it'll be better. If you have any questions, make sure to drop those in the comment section. Make sure to like the video if you liked it, and subscribe to see more. I'll catch you guys in the next one.